Now, um, I've got a mate who who, who um, finds you, you know, such an inspiration to look at, and your, you know, in terms of your achievements in the sport, and um, he's gay, and and he really admired, you know, what you were doing as as almost, I wouldn't say like a, a spokesperson, but you know, in terms of taking a, a, a sort of, I guess, brave decision to come out. How, how aware are you? Of, being kind of you know an inspiration and an icon to to people like that yeah i guess it's something that didn't really happen intentionally but um, i'm really pleased and proud that i can um be able to represent that so um like i obviously came out to my friends and family a couple of years before i did um an article for out sports um so i was like very lucky before I came out as as something I was very insecure about and sort of really uncomfortable talking about or or sharing. Um, But then by the time that I did write that article, I'd been out for a couple of years and sort of fully comfortable and accepted it and everything. And I just, I wrote this article um, thinking that no one would really see it. Yeah. um, But it might be something that someone who was in my position might read. And so it might help one or two people out there. So that was my motivation is to sort of share my story and certainly didn't think it would get the um the amount of attention that it did um and like what have i done it if i knew that it would have like it's not something that i'm worried about or shy away from but um i guess like like i was saying before i am more of an introvert and sort of it is sharing a lot of yourself but um I think on the other side, like it's, it is really cool to be able to be that person for someone because I obviously had people who I um, look up to, other athletes who had come out before I did. So they made it easier for me. And if I can make it easier for someone else, then um, that's something that's pretty cool and pretty special yeah. um, to be able to do. So, um, yeah. And I think, like, I, again, like, I don't, try and do anything special as well like i'm just living my life and doing yeah. what i do um and it's something that i'm open about and it's i guess um i guess in a way that's a good thing as well is that like it it isn't anything um like like it's not a big deal like in, and it almost yeah. should be made it a big deal about it it's just like this is who i am this is a part of me a thing about me and then i get on with my life and um, I think that's a, almost the best way to be is sort of it is because it isn't a big deal and it shouldn't um, be made to be like that. Yeah. It's very it's very inspiring, I think, to to see your story. You mentioned there about role models. I mean, um, who who are who were who are your role models in 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 uh, in sport? Um, I guess in sport in general, Rob Waddell um, is definitely one of my biggest role models, and just. Not only that he, he was an absolutely incredible athlete, but he's just the most amazing human being as well. Right. Like such a such a great and inspiring um, role model, and he's the chef to mission of the Olympic team now. And he's um, yeah, he's got time for everyone in the Olympic team. He's sort of um, doesn't matter who you are and what sport you do. He's sort of like um, just very caring, very genuine, um, and just an absolutely amazing leader. Um, with just so much respect from everyone. So, yeah. um, and also what what he's done, like um, in rowing and in sailing and um, sort of everything he turns his hand to, he seems to be amazing at. So, um, yeah, I think, yeah, Rob Waddell for sure. And that's actually one of my first memories or clear memories of the Olympics oh, is watching him win a single in Sydney when I was 10 years old. So, um, yeah before i was rowing myself so it was the only gold medal new zealand won at that olympic so it was really was it? um even though i was more into equestrian then and i was glued to the tv for the two weeks of the olympics mostly watching the equestrian but also watching watching the rowing partly because it was new zealand's uh best and i think at that point only chance left to sort of win gold yeah. but um, also mum and dad were um were very keen on following the rowing as well 
Are, are you like, um, I mean, I guess you're a full-time professional. I was, I was kind of going to ask you, uh, you know, a couple of things. You know, what do you do? Is there anything? I know you ride your horse outside of rowing, which is, you know, um, one thing. But, you know, are you planning to stay in the in the sport post um, Tokyo 2021? Um, um, I'm still... Still unsure, like, yeah, just trying to get through this year at, at, at the moment. But, um, yeah, not sure what's around the corner. But, um, yeah, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do when I finish rowing. At the moment, I'm supposed to be studying a, a PT course uh, to be a personal trainer. Oh, really? I say supposed to because I keep getting distracted by all my side hobbies. So um, also uh, been doing a lot in the garden lately so um what like uh, so i made a veggie garden um it's the the most recent um project so um mum and i bought a house in cambridge together uh about june last year it was about 10 days before we went to europe for for three months that we moved in so yeah sort of very torn to be going overseas last year when I said, like leaving my brand new house behind, and um, so yeah. As um, when I got home from Europe last year, as I I did a lot of gardening then and landscaping around the place, um, and then pretty much ran out of money, and then get start or get into the full swing of training again. You don't have much energy to be doing too much outside of rowing. So then uh, it's just like the last a uh, month or so I've been doing a bit more in the garden and made a new veggie garden and sort of like extended the landscaping around the back of the house further so yeah, I guess yeah. that's another one on my side hobbies but also during lockdown here in New Zealand I, um, I've got a sewing machine as well so I got that out and started making wow. a few pairs of shorts so you're kidding yeah. right. oh wow that's amazing so, who knows I, I guess like I really don't know what I'm gonna end up doing when I um finish rowing i feel like i've got a lot of things that i'm interested in doing but yeah until i actually do them i don't know yeah 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 what's yeah. your age now rob if you don't mind me asking okay what's your age now if you don't I'm mind me asking? Now. you're 30 yeah that's so young oh. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so you you've got options by the sounds of things yeah yeah hopefully yeah so um, I don't know if you 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 got um, you heard some of the news uh, from the GB Ryan setup, but there was quite a big fuss here with um, the news that Jurgen Grobler had retired. Yeah, and I wonder what your thoughts were on that. Yeah, I guess um, no, it's obviously a, a huge loss to the to the GB team because he's been such a an influential coach of amazing results um what has it been over 20 30 yeah. years now yeah since so, 1990 really yeah so um yeah no it's, it's a huge loss obviously for the team but um he's had an amazing career and um good on him but i guess i don't know you you know when it's time to to do something different and enjoy life in a different way yeah I, I, I think there was kind of on the one hand, you know, um, the the announcement that he's retired. I'm, I'm not sure it was as simple as that. I'm not sure if he yeah. really wanted to retire and there wasn't other yeah. stuff okay. going yeah, on. I don't know enough about it to, to, to know everything that's going on. But, yeah, no, he's, I just think he's had an amazing career and obviously been a, a huge part of the success of the, the British team for such a long time. Yeah, I mean, thinking about the guys that's coached you, um, you've been coached by people like Noel Donaldson and um, Calvin. Is it Calvin Harris? I forget his surname. Uh, uh, Calvin Ferguson. Ferguson, yeah. Sorry, yeah, Calvin. Calvin Harris, I wrote the double with. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, how 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 do you get on with your coaches? I mean, what do you what do you look for in a in a in a good coach, and what sort of relationship? You know, I'd say that. Um, yeah. I, I think I feel like I've got a pretty good relationship with all the coaches I've had and feel like I yeah, can definitely take something away from um, every coach I've had. And everyone, like, I think every coach has got their um, individual, like, strengths and weaknesses. So 
um, it, it's yeah, I think it is quite different to yeah. like working with different coaches. But yeah, you definitely gain things from having that sort of insight. And like I was saying at the moment, where we've been rotating around the the four coaches in the men's squad at the moment, and just having that input from from different people and a different set of eyes possibly even saying the same thing but in a, a slightly different way is is very helpful yeah really um ian weir has, has asked a question and probably heard us talk about uh jürgen grobler um it's, it's a bit of a big question so you know i don't mind if you duck it but um you know who would you hire to replace jürgen grobler if if you were the person in charge of gb rowing you know if the world's your oyster yeah oh gosh i don't know um I feel like yeah there's so many options and i don't yeah until you actually sit down and see who's in front of you and interview them i guess and and then again like each coach is different and i think different coaches work diff better with different athletes as well so yeah do you do you look at particular crews like when you go to world championships say and you like to look at crews paddling particular crews paddling along or, or the style of rowing is there any sort of um crew or or sculler that you're drawn to on their style um i love watching the german men's eight <laughs> <laughs> yeah because they're so smooth um i don't know i guess i wouldn't say there's any anyone in particular that um like it possibly like in the past like watching a lot of ryan videos growing up and when I was younger, like there'd be um, ones like Zach Purchase, particularly, I think I got into the into rowing around like the end of 2005, uh, beginning of 2006, which is when Zach Purchase won the yeah. lightweight single at the World Champs in Eton in 2006. And I think that's the race that really stands out to me. And I actually go back to a lot to see the way oh. he rode then because I think that is one of the most flawless um, exhibitions of single sculling. So, um, yeah, sort of ones like that. I think also the French men's double who won the um, Athens Olympics. Yeah. Is another one. So, and also like videos of Zeno rowing in like um, 96 and 2000. So like there's definitely one, I, another one is um, Thomas Langer as well. Um, oh yeah yeah so, like those are the ones that i like to really go back and watch i guess like when you're paddling around at world champs and world cups and stuff you don't always get to yeah. unless you're sitting on the bank which you don't always get to see a lot but i do always enjoy watching the the german men's eight um, yeah too. I, I love that too um hopefully we're going to talk to uh, richard schmidt um in the yeah. next few weeks or so so um I, um, I'm just wondering what you make of the men's singles in terms of Tokyo, because you're in an ideal position to uh, to look at that. There's been, you know, that that final race was was one of the most exciting races of the World Championships of of, of, of recent years, and uh, there's there's quite a few candidates up there for the gold medal or or to to win a medal in that event. Yeah, I think um, yeah, I feel like it's it's anyone's game because of how how close it is and um i'd say ollie with like another by then possibly two years um under his belt could be pretty hard to beat but then um the other guys like sperry and um uh Shetel as well are, are very fast and like any one of them on the on their day um i think could have it so yeah and i gather you know one of the guys in that um final last year um oh his name just gone um um the the the, the dutch scholar um right. Stefan Breunink, sorry just yeah. came back. he's he's now probably going to be one of your competitors yeah yeah i think he's well like for this year i think he was supposed to be back in the double so it'd be interesting to see if that's still the case next year which um, is going to be a really hot event yeah. and i say like yeah i'd say like no like i'm not going into the double because I think it's easier or anything like it's such a tight competitive event and I haven't raced in it for for three years so 
um i don't know i think like for me the reasoning is like really enjoying rowing with chris and i think we are a very fast combination and i'm excited for what we can do but it's like again men's sculling or all of all of the events uh, and categories are so competitive that um yeah who knows anyone on their day yeah yeah um Another question I, I had for you, I mean, you, you might have already answered this, but it was, um, it, you know, if you got a, a day or a couple of days completely off the rowing, you know, how would you spend your time? With bears. <laughs> <laughs> what no. is it? What is it that gives you being, you know, being uh, with with a horse, a personality like Baz, and and going through your paces on the horse? What is that gives you that that rowing perhaps doesn't um I, I think there are actually a lot of similarities like w with a horse when you do get it going well you sort of hit like have that relaxation and um i don't know just the, the movement of it is actually i think very similar to rowing when you get the movement right you're sort of very relaxed you're moving with the boat um it's sort of very flowing and i guess you get that sort of um endorphin or those endorphins from feeling good about what you're doing so i think it's actually very similar on a horse when you get it going well you have a similar um sort of feeling but yeah. um, i think like it for me it's at a much more um sort of basic level um on a horse as opposed to to rowing but it's still something i get a lot of enjoyment out of and i think it's also that sort of being with an animal it's almost like therapy in a way i guess so it's like my therapy animal to just sort of go and unwind and you give him a treat and he absolutely loves you so um, oh that's, that's amazing yeah so no it's, so when, it's pretty cool when's the next time you'll you'll go and ride bass uh so i rode him today but uh he might have tomorrow off because i've got a couple of hard training sessions and uh, uh not as much time in between and then um as the weather looks a bit miserable as well so i think friday might be the next summer go for a yeah, ride yeah, yeah. i've got some more jumps to paint so i might go and paint some of the jumps oh, that's pretty cool just you talked about training there uh, you know one of the one of the questions i've been asking people is is you know in terms of their mentality and so on what's the hardest training session they've they've ever done Ooh, um I think anything that's sort of really in really high intensity intervals. So, um, in 2018, before the world champs, I think Noel had us doing, I think 30 seconds on 30 seconds off on the UG. And then I think it went to 40 seconds on 20 seconds off. And I think we'd do it like 10 times and then repeat that three times or something. So that was just one of the hardest sessions to, to get through it, I think, um because it's absolute max um and then yeah it's definitely one of the most painful and hardest to get through but probably like for me like a one of my least favorite sessions is low rate or catch rate long distance pieces because i'm i don't know obviously like in a 2k race so rate a, a lot higher than other people do so when i'm capped on a um, yeah it rate i feel very sort of held back and sort of yeah. can't go as fast as i'd like to and also the being longer distance so um not the best at, at that so it'd probably be more of a frustrating session for me yeah i wonder we'll we'll, we'll draw this this to a close shortly Robbie. but i, I just wonder in terms of you any words of advice for you know man of your size and shape and shaping out in running just um how how to make it really um, um, I think, I think like, like, um, I don't know, just train hard, really. <laughs> if, you, if you do the work, um, I guess like that's sort of like the mentality that I sort of started out with and sort of very early on, um, sort of like I did my first rowing season and then in the first off season, I was doing like 90 minute ergs three times a week, just like, cause I'd started rowing a little bit later than other other um guys my age sort of racing against them at school and stuff so i was a yeah, couple of years behind so i thought i've got to catch up somehow um so 
yeah, do 90 minutes on the UG three times a week or winter. And then every other day I'd be out rowing or biking or doing yeah. something. Um, and then as a second year rower, I won um, the under 18 single at the South Island schools champs and stuff. And um, yeah, like I was went from being a nobody or like a novice rower the year before yeah. to being like one of the more competitive um, in my age group as a second year rower. So I think, yeah, it's just do the work. So, and also if you row technically well, so that was something that I've always been um, really keen on and studying videos and stuff and like particularly early on on how I wanted yeah. to row, so. I know that was really intriguing to hear you talk about, you know, you know, role models and, and looking at, at different sort of inspirations in terms of um, great scholars of the past technicians you know it's, it's really interesting because you're, you're obviously a man with a special gift in the sport I mean um, wh whatever happens no nobody really there is nobody like you as as a single scholar in in the world of rowing I know you know you haven't had the results in world championships that you might like to have done but you know you, you've you've basically left a mark on the sport which which will be there for all time yeah I guess like it's always um yeah the races you don't win are always disappointing but then i would like to think that when i do choose to move on from rowing that um i am proud of the the successes that i have had and um the races that i have had and have won and yeah i guess i don't know some of them like for me have been been pretty special so wow been pretty cool i think like, the race that sort of really stands out as the the final of the the double in 2015 with Chris um and that we sort of came behind and then rode through the the German double with Marcel Hacker right on yeah right on the line and it was such a hard fought medal and we only sort of just got it and in that regatta as well we only just like it was such a tight race in the um semi-final as well that it was a photo finish I think between the Aussies, us and the Italians, it might have been just to make the the final yeah. and then um yeah, I, I guess we were stoked to be in the final to qualify for the Olympics and then to come away with a a medal and in yeah. such a tight margin as well. I think like that's definitely a, a pretty special memory as well. I hope you're gonna have a lot more special memories in the sport of rowing and beyond Rob Robbie, thank you very much for talking to Crosses Corner. You've been an absolute star. Yeah, thank you very much, Martin.